Oh snap, Blaze is going live. Hey, good day, good day, good day, everybody. How y'all doing? Thank you for joining me. Just in case any of y'all are out there joining me for the very first time, I am your host of Winnie Core, Brian Glaze Gibbs. Google Brian Glaze Gibbs and see what you come up with. You know what? Hit the like button, subscribe, share. Get your signed copy of my book, Beyond Lucky, The Brian Glaze Gibbs Story, A True Story of Crack, Money, Murder, and Redemption. Listen, folks. This is my ministry, this is my platform. I utilize it, share my thoughts, my views, my experience, to try to put it back out there. So somebody that's out there that might be on a ledge, that might be lost, that's indecisive about doing right, doing wrong, they can listen to the words that come out of my mouth and see that, guess what, man? It's no shortcut in life. Only thing come fast is trouble. Easy to get into, hard to get out. Don't be like me, wasted 15 years out of your life that you cannot get back, trying to be down, trying to be cool, trying to impress people do not give a damn about you. Listen, folks, hit the like button, subscribe, share. Today, I'm going to give you an East New York story. I'm going to talk about East New York, Cypress Hill Project. You know, here it is, man, growing up in there, it's totally different, man. The concrete jungle, anything goes. You know what, folks, listen, sit back and think about it. Everybody that came from Cyprus or that geographical area, they didn't want to stray. It's only a chosen few. We want to stray because we want to be down. We want to be cool. I'm going to speak about right now is this. My man, Drac. Jerry Jordan, a.k.a. Jerry Sanders. Drac. It was Drac and Pig. You know, these guys, man, like I say, they was a little younger than me. So like little brothers. But once again, man, they had balls. Sometimes, that's the problem. They had too much balls. Anywhere you go, these young cats used to go Latin Quarter, tear it up. When you start hearing about guys like K-Sean and all these other guys that was out there, whatever, K-Sean and them used to fear dracking them because Drack and Pig used to put the knuckle game down. So once again, like I said right now, was everybody's different. So you got people that got the knuckle game, and then you got people got the pistol game. Even right now, you got some of these folks, when K-Sean became K-Sean, you know what? It's a few times. You know, he came around Drac with his face all screwed up. Drac, man, what the, oh, man, I know you ain't doing that to me. No, no, Driz, you my man, you my man. But you know what, like I told you right now, respect is respect. When people know that you would get on them or get in them, guess what? They tighten up or whatever. But like I said with Drac, man, Drac was, how can I say, funny dude. Him and Pig in the late wood, the late messing so um, um, Pig also, they will rank you the hell out. You don't never want to get into a, 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 a war word with these guys. Because right now, is they'll make some of these guys go home crying. Because once again, that's how vicious they was with their mouth and their tongue. You know, anyway, right now, like I say, man, you know, they's out there, always about it. You know, right now, Drac had the opportunity to get down with me. But he didn't do that. He wanted to be his own man. So once again, like I say, to me, part of my crew, the Eminem crew, came from Drac. You know, part of these little cats that was down for me, they were down with Drac. But once again, I recruited them. And I made them a proposition, an offer they could not refuse. Yo, man, y'all can go down to Manhattan. And y'all can go there, snatch pockets, you know, you know, rip their pockets out, take their wallet. You know what? You can come out with a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar, five thousand dollar. Or you might come off with a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, or you might come out there with nothing. That's what you're going to get when you keep going up there doing that. I said, right now, is this what I'm going to do? If you get down with me, I'm going to pay your cats. Okay? You get a salary once a week. If you need a lawyer, you get caught, you're down with me, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get a lawyer. You're going to get bailed out. If you got to go away and do time, guess what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Your family going to be taken care of. I'm going to come see you. So once again, right now is, guess what? That was what I was offering. So being that I was offering that type of benefit, Drac wasn't offering that. So most of the cat that used to be down with him got down with me. And once again, like I said right now is, you know what? When you look at it and you sit back and think about it, I took some of these young guys and stopped them from going to Manhattan, robbing and stealing. But then again, right now is, some of them are turned to cold-blooded murder. Because that's what I was about, money and murder. 
And you know what, like I told you right now, was I had a bunch of people following me all for the wrong reason. Imagine if I'd have had them follow me for the right reason. But like I say, here it is, I was doing my thing. Brooklyn, Queens, and then all I say right now is, Track had opportunity. He was like my little brother, you know, but he didn't want to get down. So once again, what wound up happening is this, man. Here it is. Drag got picked up and charged for a murder. This man did 28 years. 28 years for murder. He didn't do. Think about it. 28 years for murder he didn't do. And he right now, I did 10 years. I got sentenced 10 years. And everybody know my track record. But the difference right now, I made a deal. But even in that process when I made a deal, one of the first thing I did was tell them, listen, Drac did not kill that mer did not kill that person. Drac was innocent. Drac didn't have nothing to do with it. I broke it down. Because once again, I was there. I knew what happened, I knew what took place. So when you know certain things and you call yourself trying to right your wrong, what you're gonna try to do is you're gonna try to help somebody that's innocent when you know they're innocent. So when you look at it and you sit back and you think about it right now, is to me, if I'm going to come clean by all the stuff that I did, okay, all the people that I hurt, all the lives that I destroyed. So once again, if you're going to come clean, you might want to call them all, all the way clean. And that's what I did. I came clean. I broke it down to my solicitor, man. Here it is when that murder happened. In the summer of 88, track didn't have nothing to do with it. But even you sit back and you think about it. And they took this man to trial, knowing right now is guess what that he was innocent, and he still did twenty eight years for something that he didn't do. And sometimes, folks, listen, man, what you gotta be mindful and you gotta understand is a reputation is a monster, because right now he had a reputation, but it was nothing about killing. They know he's gonna get his money, but it was nothing about killing. So once again, and that death turned out to be an accident death. Whereas the guy didn't die as they say he died. The guy died of negligence because of the hospital, because of the doctor. But they didn't care. The, what? District Attorney Office in Manhattan, what they decided to do when they got the evidence? Swept it under the rug. Later for that life. Later for a drag. You know what? Here it is right now. Was He probably was innocent this time, but we know he got away with some other stuff. And folks, listen, that's why right now, Wes, you, you, you got to be mindful and you got to know where you're at and who you are. Because once again, a reputation can come back and bite you in the red hand, man. And the end result, like I say right now, man, shout out to Drac. Um, remaining strong, um, not being bitter. Because once again, like I said right now, is to me, imagine how many people's in there for something they didn't do. And imagine being in there for all that time for something that you didn't do. Then all of a sudden right now is guess what? You know what? You gotta do 28 years. That's backwards, folks. Hey, listen, man, hit the like button, subscribe, share. Like I say, this is another story from East New York. Like I said right now is, like I told you, man, Drac, pig, you know, rest in peace, pig. You know, like I told you right now, man, like we came a long way, man. We came a long way. And right now, what we have to do is get out there and tell our stories um, so these kids understand right now that there's no shortcut in life. And then come fast as trouble. Easy to get into, hard to get out. One love. Yo, Glaze, I just got to my favorite part of your book. This is Out of Prison as a New Person. So, page 308, May of 1998. That's actually when I had the pleasure of meeting you and we worked together on that 10.30 to 3 a.m. shift, which was crazy. Um, my respect level just went up like 10 more notches for you. So I knew about your past. I knew about everything that had gone on. But what I didn't know is you were going from $40,000 a day to, I think we were making $12 an hour there, that night shift, something crazy. So for you to be able to have that work ethic of going from slanging easy rocks to slanging heavy packages and uh, working that night shift and just being the positive person you were that whole time and offering encouragement to everybody that worked that shift. Have you checked your tire pressure today? I don't have a flat.
Have you checked your blood pressure today? No, I don't feel sick.